Hello everyone, welcome to week two. Let's review some database components from last week. We have entity, right? An entity can be a person, a place, event. We have relationships. This is how the entities are related together. Each entity has characteristics, its own characteristics, attributes. And finally, we have tables. Tables are our relations. In each table, we have rows as our single entity and columns our attributes. So we can have a table named customer and this table will have attributes, first name, last name, phone, for instance. And each row represented by tuple is the data, data values. So a structure in a relational database is two-dimensional with rows and columns, right? Rows are tuples. This is just a single entity occurrence and columns are attributes. Remember that each column must have a distinct name and all values in that specific column should conform to a specific data format. So in each table must have a primary key. So there will be an attribute or could be a combination of attributes that will uniquely identify each row. So for instance, in this table of customers, we identify as a primary key as several attributes, including first name, last name, phone. So this combination ensures the uniqueness for each row. When we create and design our tables, our relations, we need to remember that column names and table names should conform to specific standard. We cannot use special characters, which is also relevant to any tables in, for example, in SPSS or even Excel files. We should use descriptive names. Each attribute, each column will have a specific data type. Let's look at various data types. In MySQL, for example, we have three main data types. We have strings, numeric, and date and time. So char is a fixed length string, letters, numbers, or special characters. And size, parameter, is defined by us, that can be from 0 to 255. Varchar with specific size. It's a variable length size. And in this case, you notice the difference in the length. So if you know ahead of time that your value is going to be a short string, then you can use the char. If it's going to be a text, a customer review, you may use a varchar. Uh, there's other additional data types that you can look at and use in the future. In terms of numeric data type, one type is Boolean, where if you have zero, it's considered as false, and if you have non-zero, it's considered as true. Float, integer, in date and time data types, you have a variety of choices, year, uh, different timestamps. In addition, remember this is from MySQL. In addition, if you're working with SQL Server data type, there is slight difference in terms of max size and um, definition. And if you're working with a mass access data type, there's another set of data type definition and description. Here's an example of a table student with eight rows and seven columns. Here we have a primary key student num, and there is no space right in uh, our column names. We use underscore. You probably, just by looking at student class, you can guess the size of the char used, right? It's only two. You will specify char of length two in your data design. All right, the notion of key is extremely important designing our database. We can have super keys, attribute that you use to uniquely identify all attributes in relation. All super keys cannot be candidate keys. So we have a primary keys. It's a candidate key which uniquely identify the tuples in a relation or table. While there can be more than just one candidate key, right? Only one will be chosen as a primary key. And here's useful information, the difference between super keys and primary keys. And probably one of the most important is that super key attributes can contain null values. But if you create primary key, it cannot contain null values. All right, here's another example of key uh, usage of keys in table. Let's look at super keys. So these are attributes that uniquely identify each row. As a super key, we can select student IDs, 
student social security numbers. We can select combination. How about student ID and any other attributes? So these are super keys. Candidate keys, these are minimal super keys. So out of all possible attributes, identifying each row uniquely, we should select a minimal super key. So perhaps student ID or social security number. So our primary key in this case will select student ID. In the second table, department, we already have our primary key. And this key and this attribute also shown in the second table, the student table. So when the primary key from one table is used in another table, it becomes a foreign key. So in this case, department code is a foreign key in relationship to department table. And these two tables can be joined via this foreign key. And of course, we can have secondary keys, some attributes that we'll use for data retrieval, for querying, for example, a student last name and student date of birth can help us in querying. Mm -hmm.